It's how to switch between apps effectively and efficiently for better results. And we want to emphasize that this is not for advanced users. This is for beginner users. This is not something that you should be intimidated by. And in, in fact, that's one of the purposes of this workshop is to show you how you don't need to be intimidated by these, these big, uh, complicated, lots of buttons kind of programs. You just need to know a little bit to be dangerous. The other thing I like about what we're talking about, if you happen to be that pro level user, you can still use these tips to make your life easier because I've been using Adobe 25 years, 25 years now. I hate to admit it, but 25 years now. And when I started learning about Express, um, which is one of the tools we're going to be using today, I was like, man, it's a really cool tool, but how is it good for me other than teaching people it? And what I've learned about it is one, it's great for a new user. But two, if you're a pro user, there are tricks you can use. And that's some of the things we're going to look at is, one, how to get you from that intro level to a more pro level. And two, if you're at that pro level, how you can go and use that tool to make your workflows more efficient. So let's start off. And what we're going to start off with is talking about Express and Illustrator. Now, Express, if you've never used it before, it's a really great tool. You can make graphics, you can make presentations, you can make videos. What we're going to start off is making a graphic. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that graphic and we're going to put it into Illustrator and modify it. Because a lot of times when I'm producing something, let's say I'm putting together something for the web. I need an icon for it. I can go out and search and look for an icon and go all over the place and try to find something. I can go on Adobe Stock, which we do have Adobe Stock for free, but then I'm still sort of digging. You know, I'm doing a lot of work. Whereas I can go into Express, I can get a graphic, I can download it and put it in Illustrator and modify it. The other thing for me with my workflow is a lot of times I like Adobe because I like kind of controlling things and maybe I'm a control freak, I don't know. But um, I'll go into Illustrator and I'll be like, oh, I need this. Well, I'll just go in and draw it in Illustrator. And that takes a lot of time because I really want to make it nice, look nice. But if I work from something that's already in Express, I don't have to do that. So I'm going to stop talking so much. I'm going to go ahead and start showing because I'm talking a bit too much here. So let me go ahead and share my screen. What I always tell people is it can look a little confusing your first time in Express, but all you have to know really is a big purple plus button. If you learn the big purple plus button, it just makes your life so much easier. So I can hit this big purple plus button. And it gives me different options here. So I can see a custom size graphic from photo, from template, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to read through all those. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start off with custom size graphic. And what this allows me to do is if I select custom size graphic, I can put in a specific size. So if I know the size that I want for the piece that I'm working on, I can go ahead and put it in here. Let's say I don't know that size yet. That's fine. We can always resize this later. So I'm just going to leave it as the standard 2560 by 2560 and hit next. And so when I do this, it brings up my canvas and all my tools will load here in a second. Sometimes when I'm screen sharing, it's a little bit slow. And with it, what it tries to do is give me templates. And I love, love, love the templates in here when I'm building, but that's not necessarily what I want to use today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out this template panel. I don't want to use that today. What I'm going to do is I want to go to shapes. So whenever I'm using this trick, I want to use shapes because shapes are essentially vector graphics. And if you don't know what a vector graphic is, that's fine. You will learn about them very shortly. So I'm going to select shapes. And in here, it will bring up a whole mess of different shapes. And like I said, I can definitely get down a rabbit hole here, but I'm going to keep it simple. And I'm going to imagine I'm making a graphic for something about science. So I'm going to type in science. And then hit Enter. And it will find all these different graphics for science. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this little uh, beaker here. And that will add it to my piece. Now, I could stop right here, but let's say I don't really know what graphic I want to use yet. So I can take this graphic, I can click on it, and I can move it around. So I'm just going to move that over to the side for now. And then I'm going to find another graphic. I'm going to use this one right here. Let's 
try that one more time. There we go. And oh, I ended up bringing in two. I got impatient. I was pushing things too fast. I can always delete other pieces out. And then let me find just a little, we'll just do one more that I want to use here. Let's use this test tube right here. That'll work well. All right. And so what I want to make sure here is I brought these pieces in and that they're not touching each other right now. So you can see they're not touching each other. They're all in there. Now, with this right now, I could turn this into any kind of social media graphic. I could make an icon right here inside of Express, but I want to have a little bit more control. I want to edit these a little bit further. And when I come in here, when I'm in Express, I can click on one of these and I can change its color and I can change its opacity and I can replace it and I can do some things like that. But that's kind of the limit of my control right now. And I want to edit these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to download. And I have a couple of different options when I select download. So I can select PNG, PNG with a transparent background. So if I needed to have uh, no background, I could do that. A JPEG or a PDF. So again, socials. If I was doing this on a website, something like that, I would go PNG, JPEG. PDF, that's a weird option. People often are like, well, why would I need a PDF for this? Well, there's a couple of reasons. If you're creating something in here you want to print, that'd be a good reason. Or if you're doing this trick that I'm going to do today. So I'm going to select PDF. I'm going to select Start Download. And that will actually download that to my computer. And we can see that downloaded right there. I'm going to close out my download window so we don't see that. And then I'm just going to switch over to Illustrator. And I've installed Illustrator on my computer already. So if you don't have any of these Adobe apps, if you want to install them, you can go to creativecloud.adobe.com and use your UTSA credentials to log in and install all of these tools. So when I have that downloaded, what I want to do is I actually just want to open up the file that I just downloaded. So I can go to File Open, or I can just go to Open right here, whatever works for you. And so let that load up. And then it should go to my downloads file. There's my project two that I just created. I'm going to select open. And it will take a moment to load, and then it will open that file. Now, earlier I had mentioned roster, or I'm sorry, vector graphics. And what vector graphics are is essentially it's graphics that are made of numbers. They're made of math. And what's glorious about a vector, I'm going to zoom out of this a little bit so we can see it better, is that a vector can be scaled all day long. So if I wanted to take these graphics here, if I wanted to do, let's say I'm doing a bus wrap and I needed a graphic for a bus wrap, I could take this graphic and blow it up so it would actually fit on the side of a bus. If I need to use this as a teeny tiny little icon, I can do that. Now. We probably all had the experience of borrowing an image from Google. Don't be that person. Don't borrow, borrow images from Google. We have Adobe Stock, so stock.adobe.com. You can always download those assets. But the reason I bring that up is you probably in high school or at some point earlier in your career said, hey, I want to create a presentation and you take that Google photo and you blow it up, you make it really big and it looks all pixelated. Well, that's because um, when you have those pixel based images, they're roster images. They're made a little teeny tiny pixel, little tiny dots. And those things can be, you know, a little bit harder to make larger. So I remember seeing a billboard, pardon me, I need to cough. <coughs> I remember seeing a billboard in, near my hometown where it had this big pixelated truck on it because someone, you know, just didn't have a large enough photo. Well, with a vector, you'll never run into that because it's not made of pixels, it's made of math. And so now I have my bits here. And what I was saying is I want to modify these, right? So if I click on these, I have two different selections. I have a little black arrow here for my selection tool, and that lets me select the pieces individually, or I have this direct select tool that will actually show me all the little points that these are made out of. 
So when I talk about modifying these, this is what I mean. So let's say with this one, I really like this little um, test tube kind of thing here, but I don't like the bubbles coming off of it. Well, what I can do is I can click on these, hit delete on my keyboard, and they're gone. I didn't have to go through and draw all that. It, back in the day, like if I wanted this, I would just go in, get on the pen tool, start drawing, I'd make it myself. You know, that's a pretty quick image for me to draw. But if if you're not, you know, if you're new with Illustrator, it might be a situation where you need to go in and it might take you a little bit longer. And really quickly there, we've created something. Now I can move that around. I can recolor that. So really easy to do to change and modify this. Uh, right here. Come on, computer. So I can go and change to a blue, for example, and modify that. Now, with this one here, it's a little bit more complex. There's a lot more going on, and it might be a little bit more difficult. And this is where I want to show you something that might catch you out first time you're doing this. Whenever you bring something in from Express as a PDF, it brings in a white backdrop and a black backdrop. If you don't want those, you can simply click on it, hit the delete key on the keyboard, and it will remove those. It makes your life a little bit easier if you need to select multiple things. So like if I wanted to select these three guys right here, I can just click and drag across them. And now I can move those around. I can bring them off of my uh, artboard here. So if I, you know, oh, I might want to use these later, but I don't want them right now. I can start to break these pieces down and drag them over off to the side. Because something, if you're not familiar with Illustrator, something to remember about Illustrator is that we have basically, it's like a piece of paper on a desk. Right here, we have our piece of paper and everything on our piece of paper, if, if I take this piece of paper and I hand this piece of paper into my teacher, they will see anything that's on this piece of paper. But anything that I draw on my desk, they won't see. So if I sit there and I scribble on my desk and I make you know silly faces over here, that won't be seen when I go and print this off. So now I have this simplified. I can move all those bits over if I want to use them later. What if it's a more complex image like this. Now, if I select this, we can see that that's kind of all together. If I go back to my direct select tool, we can see the points that it's made up of. And what I can do is I can start to click and drag over those points and it will select them. I got a little bit of the bottom there. I don't want that. So I'm gonna try that one more time with feeling. You can select that, push the delete key, and then it gets rid of that. Let's say I wanna get rid of this piece. I'll do the same, click and drag over it delete, and boom. I've gotten rid of the bits I don't want. I didn't have to draw that. I have a nice illustration that I can use. So it's a really quick method for creating graphics. Now, if you're thinking, OK, well, what's the real world application of this? You know, What would I really do with this? One of the things that I find that I'm doing a lot, I'm just going to move some of this stuff off to the side that I don't need now is that I have to create a lot of icons. So the icons might be for a website. They might be for an app mockup. They might be if I'm helping a professor with you know, their Blackboard course. Um, I need to create a lot of icons. So it's very easy for me to use this to help create icons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go to Windows and then Layers. I always like to have my layers panel open. And I'm going to name this just to double click and call it graphic. I'm going to add a new layer. If you're not familiar with this, uh, basically layers are kind of like pieces of paper. And when I put a new layer on top of another layer, it's just like kind of laying two pieces of paper on top of each other. So if I put plus here, again, double click. Name it graphic. Always, I'm sorry. Name it um, shape. You always want to name your layers because if you really end up liking Illustrator, you're going to get like 20, 30 layers deep, and you're going to forget what untitled layer or layer one or whatever you is, whatever it is you call it. Um, you're going to forget what those things are. I had a really bad habit when I was a young designer, 
And I don't know why, but I always used to give my layers proper names. So it'd be like layer Bob and layer Frank and layer Julio. And so I'd be trying to find what I'm looking and I was like, what was layer Julio again? And so it was always like the worst thing. So be sure you're giving good names to your layers. So now I'm going to create something in Illustrator. If I go over here to my shape tool, click and hold, I'm going to go to the ellipse tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a circle. And if you've never drawn a circle in Illustrator, the trick is hold down the shift key. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and create a circle. If I hold down the shift, shift key, it creates a perfect circle. And you're probably like, well, Willie, you just destroyed it. You ruined everything you were working on because the graphic is getting covered up by the circle and it's a whole bunch of mess. It's OK. No worries. Layers. They're your friend. So I can take this shape layer and drag it underneath. Go back to my selection tool. Drag that icon over. If I wanted to, I could have it kind of offset in the side here. Uh, again, I'm going to hold down Shift as I grab the corner to make it larger. And if I'm not sure if I'm having a hard time getting these lined up, I can go to Window and then Align. If you're ever looking for a window, it's always under Window. So Window Align. Let me drag that up where it's easier to see. I don't know why that's so low. I'm going to select both of my objects. I'm just using the Selection tool here. Align Center and Align Vertical. And now it's dead set in the center. With this, you know, uh, I'm not sure about the orange. Again, I could always change that. You know, maybe I want to make it, let's just try it as a white. See how that looks really quick. And then in a minute, it should change. There we go to white. And we have a very nice looking icon. Again, this could be for a mobile app. This could be for a website. This could be for any number of things. And what I want to do now that I have this, something to remember, just this to shuffle back really quick, if I go back to Express, we can see that it says right up here, it's saved. And it's saved into the cloud. It automatically saves into the cloud. And if I go back, I click, click on this little home icon up here. It will take me right back home. And you will see it in my recent files, that the icon is right there in my recent files. And if I go back to Illustrator, this one isn't set up the same way. So I need to do a couple things. I can go to File, Save. Now, with that, if I hit File, Save, it's going to save that as that PDF file that I originally had. What I like to do, you don't have to do this, but what I like to do, the way my brain works, is hit Save As instead. And then when I hit Save As, what I do is I save this as an Illustrator file. So I know when I'm looking through my files, I'll say, you know, something like um, science icon. And I know it's an Illustrator file and that I can resize it for days and that I can edit the vectors and that I can do a whole bunch of fun stuff with that. So I would save that. I'm not going to save it for real for right now because we're just doing a demo. Let's say that I needed to use this on the internet. If I go to File, Export, there's a couple of different options in here. And I'll, I'll tell you, you know, Adobe is trying to get rid of the Save for Web. It's a legacy tool, but I still really love it. And so I'm going to show that. So Save for Web will allow me to open up a dialog box here in a moment. And what this does is it allows me to choose the format that I want to save this as. So GIF, JPEG, PNG24. I typically say JPEG or PNG24. Um, and I'm sorry if you say GIF, you're wrong. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I usually use JPEG or PNG24. Again, I would really center this up. I wouldn't leave it off center like this. And what I like about this, for one, is I can punch in a size for whatever size I want this to be here. And for two, if I was using this in a web application and I was worried about the sizing of it, I can choose the quality of the file. So low, medium, high. The lower the quality, the, the, it, it just looks worse and worse as the quality goes down. That's something to remember. Now, with this, another important thing to remember with this is once you hit that Save button here, and you save it as a JPEG or a PNG or whatever, 
you have to remember that that file is going to be a roster file. So when we save that AI file, it's that vector file. Again, made of math. We can blow it up all day long. When we go in here and save for web, when we save it as a JPEG, as a PNG, as something like that, it's a situation where it's going to um, start to sort of squish everything down, turn it into pixels. It's no longer vector. And we can't take that web file, that JPEG file, and blow it up and put it on a, on a bus or a billboard or anything anymore. So that's just something to be super careful about. What I love is not having to struggle to create something, just starting with Express. Because I'm just like, the time that this would have saved me in the past for projects, it's insane, right? Like, because you'd have to go in and individually build all those things, especially for someone who doesn't use Illustrator on the daily, right? Like, I, I do not use Illustrator as often uh, to be to build things. So being able to to shortcut that process by using Adobe Express first, I really, I really love that that trick. You invented that, right, Willie? That's the I invented trick. that. I actually learned that when I was on an Adobe session, and I was like, I am totally borrowing that because um yeah it's exactly what you say like i i like illustrator i use illustrator quite a bit but a lot of times i'm doing very simple text layout and things like that i'm not doing a lot of like traditional illustration i've known people who are brilliant with illustrator i've seen people who can go in and like here is the new ford mustang and they go in illustrator and they make an illustration and it looks like a photo of that ford mustang because they need to blow it up to put it on billboard, going back to that earlier problem I was talking about. I'm not that Illustrator user, I never will be. So this saves me a lot of time and a lot of effort. And with the next thing we're gonna look at, it's kind of backwards of that, where there's a feature in Express, and it's a good feature, but I find that Photoshop makes it easier to do than in Express. So I do this trick for Photoshop rather than for doing it in Express. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to go back into Express. And what I'm going to do is, again, big plus button. Do the same thing, custom size graphic. And I'm just going to stick with that same size and hit next. And what I want to do this time is I want to create a graphic where somebody's cut out. Maybe it's an advertisement. Uh, maybe it's a social campaign. Maybe it's just something I'm building for the web. Doesn't really matter it, uh, what it is. Again, I'm not going to worry about templates. I'm going to go to photos this time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in, let's say, student. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a student here. And I will use this student right here. And load her into the piece. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm going to make that quite large because I want her to be the focus of this. And close out the little photos window here, so I have more some more room. All right. And then one of the features in Express, and it's a good feature, is this remove background option. And when I first saw this, I was like, oh man, I I, I use this all the time in Photoshop. I do a lot of background removal when I use Photoshop. <clears throat> And so I was like, this is a great feature. And I, so I hit that and it starts thinking about it and it removes the background. And again, it takes a moment because I'm also sharing this screen. And if we look at this, we can see, we can go in here and we can work with it some more. We can do a erase and restore, but we can see it's not perfect, right? Now, first off, I'm gonna show you a trick because I don't have time to erase this all day. I'm just gonna hit that check mark. And this is my trick whenever I have this problem because there is that bit of orange. Well, I can go into background and then I can in backgrounds, I can search for orange. 
<laughs> All right. And then we have these some orange backgrounds here that we can use. So uh, let me just find one that looks pretty interesting. This looks pretty interesting. And I'll use that. And it'll bring that background in. And we don't notice that orange so much because the background is orange. And, you know, that's one kind of workaround for it. That's one kind of cheat for it. But what I want to do is I actually want to look at this in another way. So I'm going to undo really quick. I'm going to go back and go back to before I took away the background. And then what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to download this image. I'm going to download it as a PNG. Start the download. And then again, it'll pop up in just a moment down at the bottom of my screen and say it's downloading. All right, my file popped up down there. And what I can do now is I can go into Photoshop. Again, same thing. I have already downloaded Photoshop from creativecloud.adobe.com. And what I'm going to do is go to File, Open again. I can go to Open here or File, Open. I have always like to go to File, Open in Illustrator. Now, if you're a shortcut person, you can do shortcuts too. Uh, Control-O on PC or Command-O on Mac for that. And if you really want to get into Adobe, it's handy to start learning those shortcuts. It will make your life a lot better. All right, and then it'll go into Downloads again, and I can get that file and say Open. Now with this, again, what you do in Express, it's totally fine. Again, you can hide it with a colored background. You can use a similar color background. But if you want to have more control, if you really want to have more control, what I uh, suggest is doing this trick. Now, what I have open here is the Layers panel, just like before, just like Illustrator, Window, Layers. And in Photoshop, I always, 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 always have that open. Again, I can name this. Just double click, woman, and that's what I'm going to call it. And so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do the same thing that we did in Express, but I'm going to show you the Photoshop way of doing it. And the reason I want to show you this is just like when we were in Illustrator, it gives you more control. So if I go and create that layer, and there's a couple of different ways you can do selections, but I'm going to show you my favorite one. I'm going to go to Select. Subject. Select subject will do exactly what it says. It will select subject. Now, I want to also show you something else really quick. So I will come back to select subject in a minute. But there are some new tools from Adobe. If you go down, you can see a magic wand here. If I click and hold on that, there is also this object selection tool. And if I click on that tool and then select my character, it's another way of getting an object selection. But we have our selection now. So again, we can use that selection, or we can go to, again, select subject. And we'll get the same kind of selection. We'll get these marching ants. And what a lot of people are tempted to do at this point, and you'll run into some old school Photoshop users who will do this too. They just instantly hit the delete key. They're like, I want to delete the background. If I hit the delete key, that'll, no, don't be that person. Don't be that person. You don't want to do that. So what we want to do, is we actually want to come over to that Layers panel, make sure, again, that we have it, Windows Layers. And there's something here. I always say it looks like a block of Swiss cheese. That's what I call it. It's a little uh, rectangle with a circle in it, and this will add a layer mask. So check this out. When I hit this Layer Mask option, it will automatically take that background away. And if you notice, if you look closely, like up here in her hair, it took away all that orange that we were seeing when we saw it um, inside of Express. Now, what I also love about this is this is a non-destructive edit. If I go and I hit delete, that is destroying the pixels. Going back to what we were talking about earlier with roster and vector, this is a roster image. This is all made of pixels. And when I push that delete key, those pixels are destroyed. And this is a point when someone's always like, well, you could always hit Control Z or Command Z. You can always undo and save yourself. That's, that's true. You can always hit that and save yourself. But let's say you are 37 steps down the road 
And then you realize you make a mistake. You can't fix it. With a mask, you can. So if I use my zoom tool here and I zoom in and I'm going to see some areas that still need some work on here. So let me zoom in. You can see we lost a little bit of her ear here and there's still some of the orange showing through uh, right here on her shirt and up here. Well, the great thing is if you notice in layers, there's the layer itself and the mask. And we can tell the mask is selected because it has these little corners, these little corners here. And those little corners show that something is selected. If I click on the image, now the image is selected. If I click on the mask, now the mask is selected. And check this out. If I go to my brush tool, I have white selected for my color. And I start to draw over her ear. It brings it back. In a mask, whatever is white shows and whatever is black is hidden. So if I need to bring an element back, I can very easily come in and start to restore that element. So I'm just trying to make her ear look a little bit more natural here without getting orange. I got a little bit of orange in there. I can come down here, swap my colors to a black, and I can take that black right away. So I can come in and edit this. Now, I'm not going to sit here all day. When I would do this for real, it's a situation where I would sit here and, and edit and edit and edit, but I just want to show you quick and dirty. Now, I want to show you common mistake. Again, this is selected. It has those little boxes. If I click on her and I draw, hey, why isn't that hiding? I'm on that layer. I have her selected. So I'm going to undo that. I want to make sure I have that mask. Now, if I do that again, see, I can make her face disappear. If I switch back to white, I can restore it. So this is a really great way to start working with Photoshop. And what I'm going to do, there's some of those little kind of loose strands of hair, but there's a big bunch of orange there. So I'm going to try to take that out the best I can. And again, I'm doing this pretty quickly. I would take more time with this if I were doing it for real, if it wasn't just a demo, if I were doing this for a client or doing this for something that I was building. And the thing that's really fun about this, once you start learning masking, this is where you get into putting like Photoshopping other people's heads on different bodies and stuff like that. Um, and that's one of the ways that I got started with design as well is when I was in high school, we had to do a project where we made a company. And what I did is I, we made a soda company, me and my friends did. And I went in and photoshopped a bunch of celebrities holding our, photo, our soda for our company. And that was one of my first times that I used design for a grade. And uh, yeah, so it worked out really well. And you can see how easy that is to go in and edit and clean up. And again, I could sit here and really work on her and get her super perfect but I'm gonna call that good enough for theater and go ahead and save. Now, what I wanna do with this, uh, typically if I was working on this file and I was gonna be working on it for a long while, I would go to file, save as again, just like we did before. And what I wanna do is change from a PNG to a PSD. This is a Photoshop document. What this document does saves all your layers, all your editing, your mask. So if you decided later, you're like, oh man, that looked pretty good, but I made a mistake on the mask. I need to fix something. I can come back in later and use this to fix it. So I can just say, you know, woman, and it'll be my Photoshop file. And when I open this again, I'll have all my layers, all my masks. Hit save. But I also want to do is go ahead and save this to go back into Express because this is kind of the point of this is that this is something I do when Express doesn't give me the exact result I want. Pop into Photoshop really quickly, mask somebody, file, um, go back to save as. This time I'm going to save it as a PNG. And I'm going to... Yeah, we'll save. And then we'll just keep it at large file. That's OK. It'll take a moment to save. And then once that's done saving, we should be able to pop right back over to Express. And I'm going to take her out. 
just using the delete key. You could also replace, I'm just going to remove her. And I'm going to go back to photos. And this time, instead of using a stock photo, I'm going to go to upload a photo. And then I can go to my computer. I can go to my woman here. I can say open. And then that will bring her in. Take a moment to load up. And now she's in there. Again, I can click on her and I can resize her just like we did before. And so now, if I wanted to put a background in here, if I go back to backgrounds, I'm not limited to those orange backgrounds. Like, let's say I want a um, blue background. Just kind of make it UTSA colors. And it's a cold day, so I'll just go icy with it. You know, I'll go with the kind of icy looking background. And then now you can see that I don't get those orange tints around her because I went into Photoshop. So it's a little bit more work, but if you're ever having a situation where you're running into this issue, this is something to remember, is that it can help you out. Now, you might be saying, well, why would I do this? What's the point of going into Photoshop then coming back to Express? Why don't I just create a graphic in Photoshop? Well, for me, a lot of times, again, I'm in a, in a hurry. So I need to create something for social media. So I want this woman. I just wanted her to be cut out a little bit better. And then I need to put some type in. And I don't want to sit around all day like coming up with type because I got to get this graphic out the door. So I will go to text. And then I will go to one of the you know pre-made uh, fonts here uh, and use some of this typography that's pre-made. So I can come in here and say... Uh, I'll use this welcome, we are open one here. And then that's kind of hard to see because it's on the blue. But again, I can use those things that are already here in Express. So I can go to Shapes. And I'm just going to put in Rectangle. And I'm going to put in a basic rectangle. I'm going to drag that up. Oh no, it's covering the graphic. Remember, if you're ever in Express and you're running into that problem, it has layers too. They look like little pillows, I say. And if I click on that little pillow and drag it underneath my text, I can even drag it underneath the, the girl if I wanted to. And then I can start to modify that. So grab the edge, drag it over. It'll go behind her. And I can very quickly and very easily put together a social media graphic. It takes me like zero time. But again, by cutting her out in Photoshop, it saves me that time. I could sit there and try to fool around in um, Express, try to find the right background to match her or try to really edit it. And the editing tool in Express is just not quite as good as the editing tools in Photoshop. So this is a trick that I often use whenever I'm creating content for socials. So I highly recommend using this trick if you're ever struggling. Back in again, and we're gonna go back to home and we're gonna make another new file. Now with this one, so far I haven't cared too much about my size because I'm editing in Photoshop or I'm editing in um, Illustrator. But when I'm editing video, I want to think about it just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the big purple plus again. I'm going to do custom size graphic one more time. And then what I'm going to do for this, this is where I actually do care about my width and my height here. Because when I'm doing video, most of our video is going to be 1920 by 1080. Now, there are different sizes if you're doing like 4K and things like that. You can definitely resize it for whatever you're working on, but a majority of us are probably going to be editing at 1920 by 1080. So that's what I'm going to set my size as. I'm going to hit Next. The thing that I want to make sure with this is that it's the proper uh, scale and orientation for what I'm doing. You know, it's not a situation where it's going to be too small. It's going to be a square shape or it's going to be a um, vertical uh, rectangle rather than a horizontal. 
And I know some people might say, well, I do a lot of TikTok editing or video editing from socials and I, I'm doing verticals. Uh, I'm not doing verticals today. Um, so what I'm going to do with this, kind of similar to what we did last time, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to start off with a background, nothing too exciting, nothing too crazy. And I'm just going to choose one of these. Oh, it automatically chose something for me. I didn't mean to do that. Try that one more time with feeling backgrounds. I'm going to go into these paint colors here. I'm going to hit more. And I'm going to choose this kind of orange looking paint color here. You know, I use a lot of orange and blue. And I tell you, that's something doing a lot of work with UTSA. The funny thing is about it is that I start to think in orange and blue. And when I do my own personal artwork, I get I had to make sure I'm not using orange and blue. And uh, funny thing is, when I was an undergrad, I did freelance design for the college. Our colors were almost exactly the same as UTSA. We were the Roadrunners, not the Skyhawks. I'm sorry, we were the Skyhawks, not the Roadrunners. All right, so I'm going to add some text to this. And again, I really love these bits of type that are available to us um, right here inside of Express. I take advantage of these all the time. I love type and I love editing type, but it really does. I will say it's it's probably the thing that I'm the slowest about creating. So having these available in here makes my life really easy. And I'm just going to select this one right here. And that should load that up. And then with this, I'm going to blow it up. Now, with this uh, graphic here, it's a situation where I'm just going to use the, the default graphic. You can go in here and edit it, make it say whatever you want, um, you know, put in your type. Now, one note about that that catches some people out. If you go in here, you can double click on these to edit the type. But if you don't like that, notice when I bring in type, a lot of times it comes in as a group. You can always ungroup that type as well. You can choose whatever you want to do. Again, I just for sake of demo, I'm not going to go and change this up too terribly much. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. So I have my type here and I have my graphic. And again, imagine that this is just something that I want to put into my video piece. This could be a title of my video. It could be um, steps in something. It doesn't really matter what it is. It can be just about anything. Same thing I did before, I'm going to hit download. Um, PNG or JPEG, not PDF. Start download. It will download that to my computer. Now, something to remember about all this stuff I've been working on, all these bits and pieces, if I go back to Express, all of that's being saved in my recent files. All that content still available to me to edit online if I want to. All right, so I'm going to go into Rush now. And in this, I have some footage loaded of myself talking. So now you get the kind of inception of video where I'm talking, and then you get to watch video of me talking. And again, with this, if I wanted to, I could hit this plus, and I could go in here to graphics, and I can add in all kinds of graphics. But if that graphics option doesn't have what you're looking for, if you are just struggling with it, you can use your media and then it'll take a second to load up. And then I can take that graphic right there. And I can either select add or personally, my preferred method is drag and drop. I can just pull that right inside my piece. So I just drag that and drop it right in. If I take my little thing here, fun fact, if you want to sound like a cool videographer, this is called the playhead. And we never move. No, we do not move the playhead. We scrub the playhead. So if I scrub the playhead back, boom, my graphic comes up. And it's really easy to add that in. So it's a really nice workaround. If you want something to stay on the screen a little bit longer, you don't want motion for it, you want to use it for emphasis, you can do that. Now, another way that you can do this, there's a couple other things you can do. I drug it on top of my video here, but you could also drag it down before your video. So if you wanted to use a still image for your intro, you could do that. You can also take that footage and drag it up and use that as a picture in picture. So check this out. If I click on that, make sure it's selected down here, grab the corner, 
size it down. And I did one of the most common mistakes that you're going to run into. I said I had it selected. I don't have it selected. I had my video selected. You will do this. Don't stress out about it. I'm going to stretch my video of me back out. Make sure it's selected. Click on it again. Boom. I can scale that down. So if I wanted a graphic to come up over here in the corner, I can make a graphic come up here in the corner. So this is a really handy trick for titling. Now, again, don't discount what's over here. These um, graphics that are here, if I click on that, there are a bunch of really cool things in here. And they're all these really neat, you know, and I'll show you. I'll go ahead and show you. If you're not familiar with this, if I drag one of these in, let it load up, scroll my playhead over, and hit play. You can see that it's animated and it looks really neat. So um, it has this really cool animation that happens with it. And that's great, but sometimes, like I said, you don't want that animation, and that's why I like going to Express Graphics from time to time. With that, another thing you can do with Express and video, and this is something that I won't lie to you, just popped into my head recently. I never thought about this. So this isn't a trick that I borrowed from Adobe. This is actually something that popped into my own head. Um, and I'm sure other people have done it, but I really love it. I've fallen in love with it now that I figured it out. Let's say, going back to this idea here, I want a picture in picture, and I want like a simple picture in picture where it transitions between photos. So I want it to show, let's say I'm doing a presentation about robots, and I want it to transition from one photo of a robot to another photo of a robot to another photo of a robot, just something like that as I'm talking. Well. If I were doing that here in Rush, I would have to go in and import all my photos and then get the timing right on them. And it's just kind of a pain in to do. It's way easier in Express. Check this out. So if I pop back over, uh, sure. We had a quick question, Willie. The question was, can you upload your own text or photo or are we only allowed to use what is That's a great question. So yes, we can use our own text, our own photos. So if I go back to this uh, file that I did before, you can do whatever you want with it. So if I go in here, and I don't know if I have any uh, photos on this machine that I can use for a background, but what I can do is I can select background, I can choose replace, and then I can select from these backgrounds or I can delete it go back over here to photos and then upload photos. So you can upload something. So let's say you really like, you know, um, maybe you're making a presentation about graffiti art and you want to have like a concrete background. Well, you could go up here and select upload photo if you have a specific piece of concrete that you want to use. You could search Adobe Stock and find concrete as well, but you could hit upload photo here. And like I said, I don't, know if I have anything handy in here that could work as a background. I'll just use Rowdy. So I'll use Rowdy as my background. And I know that's a little wonky, but I'm going to bring him in and then bring him over and just rescale him. Again, imagining that this is a, for a background, not just Rowdy. Again, I can use my little pillows, drag it underneath, and boom, do that. As far as the type goes, and I'm going to delete Rowdy because we can't see the type through. As far as the type goes, uh, what we can do here, again, if I double click on this type, it will allow me to edit it. So I can say, you know, Willie Schaefer. And then I can double click here where it says Outreach Manager and say uh, Adobe Specialist. And then up here where it says Allure Marketing Agency, I can double click and say University of San of Texas. Get it right, Willie. San Antonio. And boom, I've made my own unique graphic out of this. So yes, it doesn't have to be the default ones. You can always modify them and make them your own. 
So uh, there's a lot of times I'll do this. I'll, I'll go out and say, ooh, I really want this kind of texture. I'm doing something about spring and I want to go get some texture of grass or a tree or something like that. And I'll take my phone out and take some photos and then use those photos uh, for the piece. So yes, you can, you can definitely use your own content. That was a great question. All right, so um, along with that question, let's go ahead and take a look at that other trick that I was mentioning. So um, first off, I actually got a little ahead of myself because I want to show you two tricks here. One, I will use this background and I'm going to say that I want to bring this over and actually I'm going to start a new file. I want to start a new file for this one. Plus, custom size graphic. Do the same thing, 1920, 1080. Next. Do the same thing, because I just want to start from scratch again, just to show you guys. And I will do this. Winter sale, da 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 da. Scale this up. And again, I could edit this if I wanted to double click on it. I can say Adobe. Winter season Adobe, buy to get one free. Makes total sense. We're going to say it's fine. I'm going to download that again. This time, PNG with transparent background. Start download. Another trick I can do inside of Rush is I'm going to go back to my plus, back to your media. And earlier, I downloaded a video clip. So I'm going to find that video clip really quick and drag that in. And that should add my video to my piece. Let's try that one more time, just being a little bit slow. And again, it just doesn't want to run all the things I'm running all at once right now. But we got that to come in. It's thinking about it now, so it should be there in just a second. Have a sip of coffee while I wait. And now we have this beautiful kind of shot of a sky that's in our video. So I'm going to do that same thing that I did before with the type, drag that in above that sky. And now, if I wanted to, I could have that still type with the moving background. So when I hit play, it should play that all together. Just being a little bit pokey today. There we go. We can have a animated background with still type over it. So another handy trick with that. So going back to where I was going before I got a little ahead of myself, going back to Express, another thing we can do, go back home. And going back to what I was talking about with robots. OK, so I want to have this kind of slideshow of robots that, that happens while I talk. Well, I can go into Plus, And this time, I'm going to go into something different. I'm going to go into Video. And if you're not uh, familiar with Express Video, Express Video is it's really good for like if you're doing quick things, like three minute how-tos, social media videos that are less than a minute. Um, just really quick and easy video. This isn't something if you're going to do like a 30 minute long how to you'd use. That's where you'd go to rush. But if you need something that's just super quick, super dirty, this is this is a tool for you. But I'm going to use this tool in a, a little bit of a wrong way, but you'll see why in just a minute. So I'm going to select video. And it's going to load up. I'm going to go ahead and close this out while we're waiting. And then what I'm going to do once I get in here is I'm going to go ahead and load up some images. But before I get to that, it's going to bring up a screen that asks me if I want to work from a template. And I'll tell you, these templates in here are really good. Um, if you're new to video editing, if you don't quite get like timing and pacing for creating video, uh, you can go in here and learn a lot about it. But if you're pretty familiar with it, uh, you have the option to start from scratch. And that's what we're going to choose here in a moment once this gets loaded up. 
Again, this will be faster for you. It's the idea of streaming and loading. We've got a lot of data coming in and out of this little laptop right now. And so it wants a name for it. So I'm going to call this uh, demo. I'm going to hit next. And here's what I was talking about. You have these little templates that you can work from or start from scratch. I'm going to start from scratch. And then it's going to load up my piece. And the way uh, Express Video works is it's kind of like um, a slideshow in a way. It creates video slide by slide. You can add video clips into it if you wanted to have video clips running into it. But again, we're thinking short, tight video clips. I do a lot of training videos with this tool. When the pandemic hit, I had just started. I worked at UTSA for all of two weeks before the pandemic started. And my team came to me and they said, hey, Willie, you're good with video, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty good with video. They said, we need like 300 videos in now. <laughs> and I'm like, OK. So I came in here to express. And I won't lie to you guys. With voiceover, production, scripting, everything I needed to do, I was knocking out eight videos a day on top of my normal work. So it really allows you to create things quickly. So now that I've done this, and again, I want to make that presentation about robots, I can select photo, just like we did before. Photo. Again, I can search or I can upload. So again, for that question earlier, you can upload. But I'm just going to type in robot. So I'm just going to use those stock photos of robots. And that's one slide. I'm going to hit a plus to add another slide, photo. And then it will remember what I searched for. So it should bring up these photos of robots. I'm just going to select this one. Plus slide, photo. And then it's just a little bit pokey to load up those robot photos. I'm going to try to hit return and see if it makes it faster. Let's try robots. Let's see if that makes it faster. There we go. And I'm just going to do one more for good measure. Photo. And one more photo of robots. And then also with this, I could put type in here. I could put graphics in here. I can put all those individual elements that we had from Express in here too. Again, I'm just keeping it simple. I just want it to be a little short slideshow of robots. There's a couple of things I need to edit in here for this trick to work, though. And these are easy things to miss. So these, these are the things that will catch you out for this trick. One, by default, it tries to put a little logo in here. Um, I've created an academic innovation theme, and it tries to put this little academic innovation. If I click on that, I can turn off show stamp. That'll go away. Now it just has this little logo icon representing that there's no logo. The other thing that I want to do in here is down here at the bottom. By default, it gives a credit slide, which is really great. If you're making a video and you want to credit the photos in the video, this is a really great way to do that. I don't need that for what I'm doing. So I hit those dots, select hide credits. Another thing it does is it puts in an outro with a call to action. So if you're not familiar, call to action, sometimes said CTA, is like visit our website, follow us on Facebook, um, do, do this. It wants some sort of action. And what I want to do with this, select the three dots again, hide outro. OK, so now I just have those photos. There is one last thing that will catch you out. Music. By default, when you create a Express video, it wants to add music. I don't want music playing in the background of this. I just want this to be a slideshow. Turn the music off. Right there, it's a little switch. OK, so now I have a couple slides, and I want to put this in my video. So what I'm going to do is select Download. And that's going to take a moment to download. And while I'm downloading, any questions coming in? we got a quiet group, but I, I really love the power of being able to create something without going to one of the more robust it, tools. 
right? Because this used to be something that you'd have to do a lot of work for these create, slides right? like this. It was very time consuming. And with Express, it, again, it's just drop it in, drop it in, drop it in, drop it in, drop it in. And check this out. Now that it's downloaded, that actually downloaded quicker than I expected. I can jump right back into Rush. And what I can do is come back over here to my downloads. And sometimes if you download something, it might not pop up right away in here. If you ever have that problem, you can always like close this out, come back in, go to your media, and then go to downloads. Every once in a while it needs a reload. And for some reason it is not showing my robots here. Usually it should upload that pretty quickly. I'll try one more time, close that out, come back in, your media. Again, this shouldn't be this way for you. It's just being there we go now, it's there. It's just being a little slow because I'm also doing this share on, on my screen. So if I take this and I drag it over to my video, scrub my playhead over, and I brought over the wrong one. Try that one more time, Willie. Bring over the right piece of footage. Stop clicking on this one, click on this one. There we go. And so now when I hit play, we can see that it creates this little animation for us, right? So we can drop that in. We don't have to go in and make 50 slides to do this. We can just do it really quick. What I really like to do with this, I use that same trick we just used with the picture in picture. Make sure it's selected. It'll be highlighted in gold when you select that footage. And then I can grab it, scale it from the corner. Move it over. And so now imagine I'm doing a presentation about robots. I have it muted so you don't have to hear me over again. And it automatically puts those slides up in the corner. And I get a really nice professional look in a matter of you know a couple of minutes to put that together. Now, if you wanted to, the, the really cool thing is about this is like if you want to make this faster or slower, you could go in to express and and fool around with the timing of the slides. But check this out. If I click on this, there's a little speedometer over here. If I click on that speedometer, I can change the speed of the clip. So I can slow that clip down. Oh, actually, I want to do this slider. I chose the wrong slider. Sorry. I can slow that clip down, and I can make it run where it doesn't take quite as, or I'm sorry, it'll take a little bit longer to get through the clip. So if I scrub over now and hit play, the transitions are going to be a lot slower. You can see that it just sort of comes up as I'm talking. So if I want to slow that down, I can. I can also do the reverse. I can come in here and select it and then crank that speed up. Now, this is going to be kind of ridiculous, but just to show you what I'm talking about, it'll go really fast now. Boom, 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 boom. So you can really play with the speed of that to get it to match up with the timing and the tempo of your presentation. And that's like way easier than going in and moving one slide and adjusting the next slide. It just, it really saves me a lot of time. So uh, again, it's something newer that I've learned and I can't wait to use it more than I have already used it. But it's a really, really handy trick. And I'm gonna go back home. Again, big purple plus button. Same thing I've been using the whole time. And what I want to do this time is go to web page. And again, I think web page is not the best name for this because I, I think of it a lot of times as a presentation tool that also makes a web page. I wish it was like web presentation or something like that. But Adobe, I talk to them all the time and I think they're tired of hearing my, uh, my suggestions for things. So once this loads up, I'm going to do a very, very, very simple presentation. If you've never used this tool, it's uh, ridiculously easy. It tells you what to do. Add a title, um, something about dogs. I'll do a dog presentation, not doga, dogs. And I can add in a subtitle if I want to. I don't have to, but I'm going to say woof, woof. If I hit the plus, I can add in a photo. This adds in a hero image, something that's big and attention grabbing. And I'm just going to type in dog. Again, I could upload a photo if I wanted to use my dog. Um, I don't have a dog, but if I did have a dog, I could select that and use it. I'm just going to choose one of these stock photos. And boom, I have a dog that is looking up at the presentation title. 
tells me what to do, scroll down to start writing my story. And I can scroll down and I can add all my typical kind of content to this. So I can do split layout, glide show, photo grid, video, buttons, text, and photos. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into this today because um, this is not a, a demo on creating a presentation. I'm just going to put some content in here. So I'm going to do a split layout. I'm going to... Real quick, the video formats that are acceptable in Adobe Express, that's YouTube and... Uh, Vimeo. So YouTube and Vimeo are the only format for videos that we can yes, use. Yes, and Express, I want right? I want to actually double check now that you said that because that sounds right in my head. But it says add a link from YouTube, Vimeo, or that's Express. So okay. three, three so options three with three that. Options. And I highly recommend, um, personally, I like using YouTube for that option. And so that's what I typically do is I will upload into YouTube and then share through there. If you don't want other people to share it, you can make it um, not a private video, but an unlisted video. And if you make it an unlisted video, I mean, there's probably billions of videos on YouTube. It's going to be really hard to find your video. So uh, that's what I typically do whenever I'm creating a presentation. Are there any things that you often get the same questions? What are some questions you get all the time? that you know, students or faculty are struggling with whenever they're using, especially Adobe Express, or especially those beginning, starting out kind of I would say questions. nine out of 10 of my lower level, you know, like when you're learning Express or you're learning Adobe, nine out of 10 questions are about access to the tool. So it's asking me to pay. That usually means if it's asking you to pay that you logged in with your Google account or your Apple account or some other account. Um, I can't access this tool. We've seen a couple, a, a handful of folks this semester who, when they put in their UTSA email, for some reason it's not working, but if they put in their abc123 at my.utsa, it works. We're working on that problem right now, trying to find that out. Um, the other one that I get is, oh, I've suddenly lost access. So... If you go into summer and you haven't registered for fall courses, you will lose access over summer. But if you register for fall courses um, before summer starts, you'll have access all summer long. So it's one of those benefits of uh, you know registering early. Yeah. So so is there a way to back up? So a student is about to graduate. They want to save their work. How, how, what does the student do in order to make sure that their portfolio work and their, their projects get transferred to their own personal account from their UTSA professional enterprise account? Graduation.adobe.com. So that'll allow you to transfer those files over to uh, an Adobe account. You get a discount on that account. The one thing that is a weakness with this, and this is something I'm actually working on Adobe with right now, is it doesn't transfer over the portfolio. It will transfer over all the graphics you've made. It'll transfer everything you've saved in libraries to Creative Cloud. But at the moment, it doesn't transfer over portfolio. I think it's a really important piece. And so I'm, I, I've actually got pretty up, far up in Adobe talking to folks about this. And it's, it's a change that I'm hoping is coming soon. Uh, what I always recommend is as you're building out your portfolio and using it for courses at UTSA or learning about it, that you just sort of keep notes on how you built it. And the thing is with portfolio, if you do have to rebuild it, if you have all the parts for it in a folder and all your notes on how you build it, it takes like two seconds to make it again if you happen to hit that snag. Exactly. And every other kind of project, almost every Adobe Express, obviously not, Adobe Portfolio, obviously not, but you can sh you can save those files to Correct. your computer. So you have a backup of the actual PSD file or the actual... Correct. And I, I won't lie, I that is how I live my life because uh, Adobe, you can save all your files into the cloud. And you'll notice as I was saving today that I was saving everything locally because I like to have local files just in case something happens. Um, but you can save them into the cloud. You can save them on your personal machine. And with Express, if you're worried about it, let's say you know you're graduating and money is going to be super tight when you're graduating. You're not going to be able to get that Adobe uh, subscription right away. Then what you can do is you can go into Express and you can download everything, right? So you won't have the editing files, but you can download all your graphics. Um, you can take those presentations. Here's a pro tip. That option I was joking about earlier with print in, in the web page, if you hit that, there's a setting in there to save it as a PDF. So you can save it as a PDF, and that way you can have an actual physical copy of uh, 
of your presentation, your videos, you can download all those as MP4s. So if you are concerned about that, you can download that content. And it's a good matter of practice, just a habit to get into. It's always good to download it to your computer and not just save it to the cloud. I always say, know. you know, and this is something that I, I can't emphasize enough with people as they're starting creative journey or moving into another creative journey is make folders with good names, put your projects in them. Like it might even be something where you go in at the end of the semester and you say, these are my projects for this semester. These are my projects for this semester. And you make a folder that just says college and it has each year, each semester. And then if you're like, man, I made that really cool project when I was a junior, where is it? You know, okay, a junior spring semester, I made a really cool project and it's super easy to find. This is just another one of like the, the layer naming. It's a good habit to get into. Do you have any other parting words for us, Willie? Sure. Last thing I'll tell everybody is if it's hard, it will get easier. And this is something that I have to remind myself every single day is that if I'm going into a tool that I've never used before or I'm learning something new, I'm going to feel miserable about it. I'm going to feel terrible because I feel like I'm a relatively smart person. Then I come in and I have to be ignorant again. And when you learn something, you have to accept that you're new that you'll get better, it will get easier, you'll get faster, and eventually you won't even remember what it was like to struggle. And for me, what I always say is Adobe's like breathing. You don't even think about it anymore. You just do it. And that's the way it'll be for you too. Willie, thank you so much for joining us today, for sharing your expertise. I know that you're, this this video, the the artifact that we're going to have recorded from this is going to help a lot of people too, not just the folks who are, who are live. And if you joined us live, thank you so much for being here and providing questions and insights in the chat. Thank you.